God, it's been way too long since I... I don't actually know, remember what's going on. The Sally is where Jessica said they speak it was to check it out. We wait between various trash cans and piles of uncanned trash until you reach a serious looking door. Knock. A little panel slides open near the top of the door and narrow eyes regard you through a password. Did we get a password? I don't remember. Fill sticks? Okay, come on in, but you better not be a pro-y. I don't even know what a pro-y is. <laughs> Man behind the bar is checking up a storm. Looks as up as you approach, but doesn't stop shaking. Hello, he greets. Hello, baby. Welcome to Oliver's place. My name's Such Finn. Oh, right. Forgot about that. What do you say, baby? Are you Oliver? Oh, heck no. I'm a fancy Dan, a cocktail man. Please remain fancy Dan. Hey, do you know, happen to know what time it is? Perhaps because you're watching you. Sorry, but be the only one around here who carries a pocket watch. It's the owner of Oliver Clock, and he left about an hour ago to pick our relationship in a pooch. From who? From who? From whom, baby? Before I was fancy the Dan the cocktail man, I was fancy Dan the English teacher. <laughs> Sorry, from whom? Okay. <laughs> from the wild guys we always get it from. With or went Oliver. <laughs> fancy Dan smiles. The old refrigerator factory. I see. How do I get there? Dan grabs a cocktail napkin and hands it to you. Oh, uh, thanks. Uh, oh, uh, wrong napkin. <laughs> Here, he takes the napkin back and grabs a different one with a couple. I can't scroll up. Take the napkin. Napkin? Napkin. I got an item Ocean City napkin. The script map of Ocean City has been hastily scrolled onto a cocktail napkin. As you take the napkin, the dam points at one of the icons on it. We're here behind Mario's store on Plunkett Street, so if you go out of the alley and then head straight for the edge of the napkin, you can't miss the factory. Plunkett Street and Fridge Factory. You now have a map of the area. You can open it by clicking. Thanks, Dan. Did that mention a baby? You want to drink for the road? First one's on the house. Sure. Do you have to drink around here? Beer? I'll have a beer then. <laughs> Excellent choice. Keep things simple, man. That's the only. Option that you gave me, the bartender pours your beer. Bottoms up. You drink the beer. You've had a better beer, but you've definitely had worse beer. <laughs> beer buzz. Oh, plus five to ma maximum HP. Nice. These folks look like, like they're here for some serious business. Just, I'll try to make a deal. Oh, there, buddy. This is private party. Club members only. L yeah, like you said. Club members only. What kind of club is it? It's the fraternal order who people who bribed us more than we are earning as gate cards. Fault Bumek? I've never heard of it. How do I join? <laughs> what are you, thick? I thought that, that was obvious, pal. Give, give us meat. How much? 500. Yeah, 500 meat. Clancy, I told you to knock off that repeat in business. <laughs> How am I supposed to come up? What? Oh, that's interesting that it gives you an indication that you're probably in for a bad time if you try to fight them, which is nice. How am I supposed to come up with that kind of meat? Yeah, you could try a pandalind with the other bums over in Gulf of Wathe Park. Where's that? Just north and west here. You can't miss it. Yeah, you can't miss it. For the love of Mike, Chancy try up. <laughs> ah, the 1920s speak is really getting to me. As you're walking past one of Ocean City's many disused public urinals, you notice that one has been filled up with ice cubes. As you investigate further for some reason, you notice that one of them isn't an ice cube myself, but a frozen rock. <laughs> I collected I forgot. You wipe the rock off, examine it, then pour it, pound it into flakes. Frosty flakes. It's like snow, but in flake form. Can you even imagine? <laughs> Oh, this game is great. Oh, I'm having a thoroughly good time. I don't know what that... Lepidop... Lep... Lepidopteratorium. Park Groundskipper is inspecting a clipboard with a panic paralysis of someone who has much so much work to do that he can't do any of it. What a relatable mood, honestly. Hi there, is something wrong? Oh, so, uh, uh, sorry, fellow. I didn't seem to want to seem rude, but I'm much too busy to chat. I'm stuck running in the place. This place by myself, and there's about a million things to do. Well, I could use an extra pocket of meat. How about I help you out? That would be great, except these new, that new city regulations disallow hiring random by timers since this is a municipal park. Only official government contracts are allowed to work here. <laughs> there's a lot of side quests? Why? <laughs> Just to be a thorn in my side, as far as I can tell. It's not like any of these tasks are dangerous or anything. You had a kind of a cagey look in your face when you said that. Okay, well, two of them are dangerous. Like, only two. That isn't even half, and I submitted a request for help weeks ago and still haven't heard anything back. Well, that's the government for you. Well, are you in luck? I just happen to be an official government contractor. That would be terrific, but I am going to need some to see some proof of that. Um... I left my ID in my other pants, I'll be right back. I'll lie. Wait, you don't believe me? I'm hurt. I'll have you know I was recruited by Mr. Johnson himself. Who? Johnson from Parks and Rec. <laughs> Jeez, man, don't know you know. Don't you know your own apartment? You'd be outright dismayed to hear. Oh, that Johnson. No, no, that's fine. No problems here. Great, what do you need me to do? Well, that depends. What kind of contract are you? I'm, uh... A st <laughs> I wonder which one's the dangerous ones here. And I guess the landscaper and the plumber. 
landscape are perfect. I was right. Perfect. A carnivorous plant exhibition in the botanical garden has gotten under control. Oh, when you say out of control, as in this is less of a job for pruning shears and more of a baseball bat with nails in it. Ah, so zombie plants. The spiders. No! Tertholomew, I mean, no! How dare you? Come on. Oh, wow. The spiders deal so much damage, my god. Alright, Gabby's gonna be. Oh, the spider's actually gonna be the hero of this fight. <laughs> I was useless. It was successfully weeded the button of the garden. Excellent. Wetlands Nasty Bramble, donated by a patron with no regard for the safety of the staff. Well, that's customer service for you. Joshua Tree, named for his discovery was David E. Tree. <laughs> Flame sword leaf. There's a really sharp stock of it that you could probably take if you were careful. Northern palm tree. Do not budge. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Was I knocked unconscious? Uh, I love this. Eye grass. Avoid prolonged eye contact. Oh. Pile and bone brush. We are beginning to leave that the specimen was doing it as a joke. Man, I miss this. This is so much fun. So, yeah. Sword leaf? Leaf sword. Ah, naming singing of Tears of the Kingdom, I see. What have we got in here? A shelf laden with miscellaneous junk. Check it out. Junk mail? Junk mail is new technology! <laughs> that allows trash to be distributed to be everybody so that we can all share the effort of throwing it away. There's nothing beyond the reach of science, and there's also nothing beyond the reach of the science center. Oh, neat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Does this actually do damage to me? It doesn't. Interesting. Complimentary dihydrogen when I'm <laughs> No thanks, that sounds dangerous. Discover your new favorite rock. There's a lot there are lots of rocks in here and you know the names of every single one of them. I suppose it's useful with it. We extract various useful oozes and powders from the rocks. Flowing ooze. And interesting powder and frosty flakes. It's kind of interesting how, even though I die, it doesn't matter because it's still, the combat still goes on, which is nice. I like how the spider thing does like, actually change the difficulty too, it's really funny. <laughs> because if people like me were unwillingly selected an option just because it was funny, now they're like in for a rough time. I can open the joke mail, I can't open the letter because you don't have a letter opener, and it was frustrating, but you have to admit that the logic behind it is sound, dang it. <laughs> Oh, are the bribery defeat the Mongols going to the refrigerator factory? Oh, neat. Okay. So I guess I can go and sell some stuff. You hear a wet, burbling noise coming from an alley and cautiously peer, cautiously peer around the corner. Two of those weird fish-headed guys are running around through the trash cans. You don't think they're the same ones from before, but since you're not hugely familiar with anthropomorphic fish, when it's hard to be sure. One of them suddenly looks up and looks in your direction. Crap, did it see you? Her war? Um, I'm gonna sneak past them. You quickly duck behind a mailbox as the fishman wetly plods at the mouth of the alley and peers around the choice and returns to its rummaging. Whew. The third walk. You're not sure if the lamppost is holding up the hope or vice versa. <laughs> Hi there, I'm such friend. Well, hey there, pleased to meet you, such friend. I'm Dusty. I can see that. <laughs> well, yep, I meet a lot of new people in my travels, so I got my name embroidered on my shirt for convenience. Also. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you up to? No, nothing, that's just tagging around. I was just gonna run a three minute card monte down the bar, but that didn't pan out. Why not? Oh, there's a fellow already running a game down the way, and I prefer not to step on his toes. This doesn't matter professional courtesy, see, see, I see. Also, because carnies get real scary about that kind of thing, and I ain't looking to be murdered anytime soon. Carnies? Any way I can help? Well, that's real kind of me. I was thinking of looking up for a different corner. Can you spare a nickel or for a cup of joe to get my feet moving? Sure. Thanks, probably a real, real good egg. That's me. Just gives you a good shandy wave and watch yourself. Front teller's down. Into the dimly lit tent to see a teenage girl dressed as an old woman sitting at a velvet ta drape table. She points to a sign on the wall that says tarot readings for the mean. Complain about the price. 50 beats is still a little steep, isn't it? I could buy 7 and 63rd, 64th gallon of gas for that much. <laughs> she stares at you and points at the sign again. 
Fine. The first card to represent your past. I think this one is by the Easy Going Gatherer. What does the Easy Going Gatherer represent? It suggests tragedy in your childhood. I see skeletons. Hmm, I don't remember anything about skeletons. The second card is about where you are in the present. She slowly draws a card. Hmm, the Hessian Weaver. Very interesting. I see, and this card represents. This card suggests that you're currently near water. Can argue with that, I suppose. The last card reveals your future. I think this one is the Imprint. Printable attorney. Definitely a real card. She glares at you. The vi your virtue holds new pens. Okay, I'll keep an eye out for that. Consider what just happened. I spent a few moments thinking about the tarot reading. A sign on the door says Tony Fiasco Hat Photographer. As you enter, the photographer, who is blissfully adjusting a complicated looking camera and tripod, gestures to a nearby waistband with suit without moving around. If it's more bills, that's there's my inbox. Um, hello? Hmm. Oh, you ain't that. Jumping Josephat. Hey, where have you been all my life? Excuse me, that face. That's exactly the face I've been looking for. It's perfect. Thanks, I've grown rather attached to it myself. <laughs> hey, you're funny too. Maybe I'll love you. You're incredible. Listen, do you know who I am? The sun in your suit roof says Tony Fiasco, hat photographer. That's right, baby. That's, that's exactly right. And soon I'm going to be the biggest hat photographer in the city. No, the country. No, the world. There's something I need first. A face? Portfolio. You know what I need before I get the portfolio? Uh, a face. Yo, a face, baby. Well, I, uh, don't you s don't say no. Don't you dare say no, baby. Stop saying that. Listen, it's easy. All you gotta do is drop holding the in the hat, and I. All I gotta do is take a photograph of the hat, and we're both we're gonna be rich, rich, rich. Me with my portfolio, and you with that thirty million. I'm gonna pay you for every picture. Uh huh. Well, gotta be different hats though. Gotta be a different hat every time. I can't pay you nothing for the same hat twice. Got it? Okay. How about this hat? What is that? An uncursed fedora? Perfect. I love it. Listen, me, baby. Guess when good health. Come back soon. Okay. Okay. A grouchy looking guy is standing in the shade of this tiny building's eaves. Players that you silently. Fine. Oh, war flashbacks again. Okay, a game of skills test your everything. Step right up, step right up, test your strength and your agility and your intellect. Every winner gets a prize. You there, sir. You gotta face the challenge of a lifetime. Only ten meet. What's the challenge? I'd like to start newcomers off with something relatively easy. All you have to do is guess my age, throw a dart to pop out of the balloon, and now drive a nail into the bar without the one swing of a hammer. All at the same time? That's right, I gotta try it. Three plus, all, three, all stats plus. Oh, no thanks. And then it should be good to go. Two goblins wearing shorts and the suspenders and carrying. You know those things, those marching band things? <laughs> They're like an upright heart, but except instead of strings, they have metal xylophone bars. Those things. Anyway, those goblins are carrying those. They interrupt you. Hi, hello. Uh, hi, what's up? You're intruding on the territory of the Glockinson. Um, am I? I don't know what a Glockins is. We are Glockins, we both. We are the, the toughest all street gangs in Ocean City, but do you think about it? I don't feel particularly threatened. Wow, that is totally- what? That is totally incorrect. I like the xylophones, though. Wait, what? The xylophones? These are Glockenspiels that we have. Oh, Glock Glockins. Ah, I get it now. I'm so outraged over you. I think we shall do a mugging you, too. Trick, though. I'm mugging, eh? Alright, give me your wallet. What? <laughs> I think it would be vice versa. Give, you give us your wallet. My wallet? Why would I give you your wallet when you're the one who were insulted? That makes a lot of sense. Very good. Here's my wallet. The head of Ayn Glockens brought. This is a small loaf of dark bread, but Glockens feel obsessed goblins. Let's hope they're single minded. This doesn't make them really terrible at baking. Great, a fine mugging all around. Well done. You all shake hands. The goblins stroll away happily, playing spring, spready, lay. Jiggly music on their Glockens feels. <laughs> what just happened? I love this game. Yep. Alright, let's do it. Hit with the dart while winding your up your arm for the hammer swing and swinging the proprietor. Well, you look about 38, but pop bang, you work a cigarette smoke, so I'm gonna say you're 34. <laughs> Nicely done, right of the money. Here's your prize some fancy new beach shoes. Ah, get. Uh, it takes a pair of clogs out from the end and hands them to you. Crab clogs makes you walk like a crab. <laughs> These shoes were made at the beach, but they have the materials that were closest to your hands. Hooray! Oh, I love it. Excellent. Oh my god, I can't. Where are they? Crab clogs. <laughs> Excellent. I love this. This is hilarious. Hobo camp, I guess. Then. It's Howie, the hope you've been to the box for last night. Aw! Hey there, Howie, how's it going? Well, hey, this is such fun. Nice to see you again. Looks like, 
Looks like that rumor you heard about a hobo camp turned out to be on the level. Oh sure, the old hobo code is pretty trustworthy as a general rule. It's bigger than the hobo, like a hobby. Thanks, you wanna know my secret? Sure, I have only one hobby in all the time in the world to practice it, huh? <laughs> This is as cozy and fighting as is possible for a barrel of burning garbage to be holding your hands. There is now a serious risk if you're not close to seizing up through the cold. This guy is in a state of washboard and do sexy. <laughs> oh, really? You're going to, to go into town on that washboard? Yep, I love the fast cut rhythm it makes. It's pretty good. I bet someday there will be fancy electrical machines that do it really good. Till then, though. Folks call me Washi, by the way. Hi, Washi. I'm such fun. I'll actually get nothing to ask. Sorry about that. Hey, no problem here. Shadow? Probably shouldn't mess around in here, we'll wake people up. I love that. Weird. Rub. This guy's really just nothing voice. Hi there, I'm such a fan. Honey, they call me 52 Teeth Thompson, or just 52 for short. Honey, is that because the 52 white keys on the town? Piano? Nope. Alright, I said about the piano. Well, it's lucky that ha they happened to find a piano for the camp. Well, they, I brought this baby with me on foot. How? Well, it took a few trips. <laughs> These are ample condiments, but you don't feel like right taking any. What does this say? These supply chain difficulties, the grub car is currently BYOG. <laughs> condiments are still available to camp residents. So is the hobo lady you met at the boardwalk earlier. She gives you a smile and thumbs up. Hi there, Dusty, right? That's me, and your name was such fun. Got it in one. Great, how you keep your friend? Oh, no complaints that would make any sense to describe. <laughs> how you like in the camp? It's real nice, everyone's real personable, even if most of them are a bit quirky. I'm thinking about getting the poker game together, see if I can find anyone with a full deck, huh? <laughs> this guy's the guy you made in the rain when you went to Plunkett Street. Well, guess what? There is Hello there, such fun. I believe it was? That's right. Always a pleasure to have another run in with a friendly acquaintance. It's nice that the rain cleared up. It is nice. I do enjoy the rain, but I also enjoy dry color thing as well. Fair. So you're the, guy, the kind of guy who's com that's comfortable in any sort of weather, huh? Yes, I do my best. I can't stop a rain cloud by crying after all. And in fact, when you get right down to it, pretty much anything that happens to a person can be considered weather or sort. Huh. That's real philosophical. Interesting. Fair. All Gus says, if you can find pleasure in any circumstance, then you'll never be a sufferer of my fortune. Gosh. Cryptography. <laughs> Wow, you haven't seen one of these in ages, whatever it is. I love how it's um, doing the music too. The one thing these notebooks have in common is that you do not understand any of them. A bewildering array of partially redacted nonsense. I don't even understand the titles of these books, much less their contents. I hope it was slipping through a worn book or just stopping to check the strange machine next to him and pencil some notes in the margins. Hi there. Um, hello, hello. You must be new here. I don't think I've seen you around before. Oh, yeah. yeah, my name's such fun. Pleased to meet you. I'm Letters with Cab. Is there anything I can assist you with? Why do they call you Letters? I'm an expert in micro cryptography, aka okay, Hobo Code. Are you familiar with it? Nope. What's that? It's a system of plagiary elements that can be written unobtrusively on walls or kept in defense posts, etc. They're traditionally used by hobos to leave messages for other hobos, to mark a house where the occupants are charitable, for instance, or to warn of a vicious guard dog, that sort of thing. I'm working on expanding the system for more general communication purposes. That's pretty interesting. Is there anything I can assist you with that? What's the book you're reading? This is a hobo code manual. It's going to teach you the basics if you like. Sure, that sounds useful. I spend 10 minutes or so going over the basics of hobo code with letters. He teaches me most think most common glyphs. If you'd like to know more, just any ask any hobos you meet. They're on about to assist new learners. That's the hobo hobo code. It's the hobo hobo code code. Hobo literacy. You're a level one student of the hobo alphabet. Hey, thanks. I saw all the stuff in the room. Stuff is a little overbroad of a topic for conversation. <laughs> Feel free to put any any particular object you want to ask me about that. I'm always happy to be informative. Okay. Hey, Lewis, what's this contraption? That, that's just a radio. Oh, right, of course. <laughs> what are all these books? Many was for various types of codes and ciphers. A genera, Beaufort, treatises, some various several variations called in their transposition, the classic Mormon, I mean, German mix up code, and so on. Interesting, there's a few books in old pictographic languages in there, too. Fascinating stuff. Well, it's all Greek to me. I say letters, what's with this poster? There are some general purpose hobo glyphs I'm working on. There's a bunch of them that are blacked out, though. Yes, well, they're still experimental, so I decided it would be wisest to take some precautions. Okay. The one thing these notebooks have. Yeah. 
I got a little notebook to letters. Yes, all my notes in the Hobo Code, more notes and codes and languages in general, as well as my studies in radio telemetry, telegraphy, and telephony. I think my aunt's recipe book is in there somewhere, too. <laughs> Did they write all of these in code? I can't make a single word. Oh, no, this is my handwriting. I see. Fair enough. Wait, no. That's not what I meant to do. This is fascinating. I cannot begin to fathom what this contraption is for. What's this machine you're working on? This is an old naval radio encryptus... Encryption graph. Encryptionograph, sorry. I don't know what these words are from the Cold Wars. I'm trying to magnify it to work with Hobo Code. That sounds hard. Yes, it wasn't designed to handle pitch grad for any system, that's for sure. But if I can get to work, it should be very secure. Interesting. And a desktop radio. It's a ham radio, what's it for? I'm listening to stuff about ham. <laughs> gotcha. Radio old shoebox is slashing in the corner. Hey, what letters? What's in this old shoebox? Old shoes, you're welcome to them. Ah, oh, nice. I tried to pick up the box, but you can barely lift it. Jeez, what kind of shoes are they? Hand me down boots. They've been passed from hobo to hobo for generations. Probably about 50 pounds of metal reinforcements on them by now. Happy boots. Wait, what do they do? Wait, something. These boots have been reinforced without regard with for a friend helmets. Lay your feet down. <laughs> That's more cypher stuff. This is a hobo lady we haven't met yet. Oh, there. Well, hello there, Jerry. I haven't, don't believe we've been introduced. I'm Veronica. Hi, I'm such friend. Can I offer you a cup of tea? It's homegrown, so to speak. You found tea leaves around here? Just about any leaves can be tea leaves with the right attitude. I'm fine, thank you, though. I like your hat. Oh, thank you. I grew it myself. The flowers. The whole thing, I'm trying to grow some socks as well, but they're much trickier. I can imagine. Can you teach me any hobo code? Certainly, dear. In fact, I think I still have my notes from when I was learning it for myself. She rifles through her handbag for a and hands you an old sheet of notebook paper with some squeakly glyphs written on it. Hobo code now was in Greece. Thanks. Neat. This hobo is wearing a hand handmade fitting foil crown. Oh, you must be the Hobo King. The crown gave it away, person. Yep, you all. You are absolutely correct. I am the Hobo King, though. To foster more familiar air, I permit all my subjects to call me Johnny. Nice to meet you, Johnny. I'm such fun. What can I do for you, such fun? I've got a question. Can you teach me some hobo code? Oh, yes. According to the hobo, co hobo code code, I am of course obliged to assist. First, let me test you. Can you see what you have here with this? I will grant you a boon. <laughs> you know, to be honest, it doesn't matter. I already know all the hobo code. In fact, I should be testing you. Oh, really? Okay, hot check. Go ahead. What's this room for a public bathroom? Well, that's simple. It's a hey, you won't scam me that easy. <laughs> You're trying to get me to tell you what you it's a rectangle with a certain crescent moon on it, so you can pretend you do all along. Well, shucks, you got me. I guess you better ask for me instead. Huh, so what is the symbol for a public bathroom then? Hmm, I think it's a rectangle for, with a crescent moon. Well, Ah, huh, well, you got it right, so I guess you're under Britain. Great. King Johnny takes out a small notebook where it's a glyph on it and hands you the page. What's this? It's the hobo. That is the hobo sim code symbol for Britain. One of my favorite jokes, I wish to. One of my favorite jokes, I could, wish I could use it more often. Thanks. Where are you from? Oh, Boken. Ah, of course you are. <laughs> ah, of course. I don't touch that telephone. Braille is only. This, this phone isn't actually connected to it. I think. Don't let you say that. I'm going to take these off because that, that really kind of threw me for a loop. Interesting. I guess I just wander for a bit. You have the ringing of cathedral bells and turn to see their source. And surprisingly, it is a cathedral, unless you're just naturally surprised by cathedrals. They're so big and pointy, you could be hiding around any corner. St. Polycarp's Cathedral. Might have to stop here, but because it's already getting a bit long. But yeah, it's nice to get back into this. It really is.